What's up, y'all? I hope all is well with y'all today. Today, you guys, we're going to be talking about idolatry because that is one of the biggest issues in our community. That is what has gotten us into this mess a long, long time ago. If you read the Bible, if you read Old Testament, you will see the consistent thing that got the Israelites in trouble. And as I have been telling you guys, we are the descendants of these people of the good old sacred text, baby. We are these people of the book. So if y'all don't know, if y'all haven't been watching any of the videos, the Willie Lynch series that I just did, the whole um, playlist, the Black People Are the Israelites playlist, we have been discussing the curse that's on our community. We have much more to come because God has called me here to, to talk to y'all, to talk to y'all, to learn you something, <laughs> to learn you something. But no, for real, um, it's really serious. I just joke a lot. Um, I might joke a little bit, but I'm dead serious because God is dead serious. And we have to understand that the, the main issue of why we are under consistent scrutiny, why we constantly are at the bottom, why so much hatred comes amongst us from other people, it's all by God's design. It's all to keep punishing us for our continuous sin. And until we truly repent and stop doing these wicked things that we're doing in our communities that is abominations to the Lord, we're going to keep falling victim to the stuff that we fall victim to. We're going to keep being the tail and not the head. We're going to keep feeling like everybody is against us. And like I told y'all in other videos, we are the black sheep of the human race because we are God's chosen people. And when you are the black sheep, you face more, um, you face more than other people. They go through stuff too. Your golden children, like if you understand narcissistic family dynamics, the golden child goes through things too. The other children go through things too. But the black sheep, sometimes they get it worse. They feel the most outcast. They feel like no one accepts them. And that's how we feel as a collective, as a race, because no one accepts us. We don't know who we are. And because we're so busy trying to fit in with other nations, when we're not designed to fit in with other people because we're our own people, we're not here to fit in. And that's the problem that God has with us. He set us apart specifically, especially for him. We are a peculiar people. Like it says in the scripture, where was I at? I was reading, where was it? It was in like Deuteronomy or something. Um, where was it? Because I had just wrote it down. I was just reading in Exodus. I think it was in Exodus a little bit. But we are, we are special people and we don't even understand that we are special people because we're so busy trying to fit in with everybody else. We're not everybody else. And that's my problem with our community as a whole. We don't stand on business because we're so busy trying to be liked by our other people. Like, look at how many people want to fit the city girl aesthetic and the city girl image when you ain't nothing like a city girl. You don't come from that. You haven't been through some of the pain that they have been through. You wasn't touched on. You don't understand the root of why these city girls are city girls. You don't understand why people, why the women are so promiscuous, yet you trying to fit that aesthetic and fit that image because it seemed like that get them the attention because you don't understand that even the, the guys out here that are after them, they have a spirit of lust on them that they too probably have suffered from because of some of their own childhood traumas that they can't escape from and the only escape that they get is being able to release nut off on some girl or maybe even on a guy. Y'all don't understand the root of the things that you want to partake in and you don't understand it. Even if it ain't to bash no group of people either, but you don't understand the root of why people do the things they do. A lot of the, the people that do the things they do that are abominations to the Lord or that are not, you know, what he really wants for you. You don't even understand why you do the things you do. Before I got on my journey, before like I was sitting into isolation, moved away and everything, I didn't understand why I did some of the things I did. I didn't know. I didn't even understand that there was a true problem with some of the things I was doing until, you know, I had a reality check until I awakened and until some of those things led to, led to other things that could have cost my life, that almost cost my life, that could have brought harm to my children. So it was until I started sitting back and self-reflecting and getting some self-awareness about what I'm doing that's leading to this, why I keep going in certain circles. It takes a point where you sit back and you think about things and you question and you question the creator, you question the God who created everybody, question the God who never sleeps, who has angels that's appointed to, appointed to watch over you and everything that's going on. 
So even things that you might have forgot, God ain't forget. God knows what happened to you. God knows what you're doing. He sees everything that's going on. Even when you think you're doing stuff in the dark, under the covers, behind the scenes, and wherever else you think you're doing stuff. That's why everything that's done in the dark will come to the light because there's always someone higher than you, higher than your mom, higher than your grandma, higher than your granddad, higher than your pastor, higher than all these, these fleshly people. There's always someone higher that's watching. So you ain't getting away with nothing. And when you serve these Little dogs, you serve these little pups that think that they act like they gods. All these narcissists in the world who think that they are gods and they want to hold so much power. You want to serve these cliques and you want to be a part of these groups. You want to be a part of the it girl. You want to be a part of the, the rapper group. You want to be a part of people that are serving other gods. You want to be a part of practices that are not of God. You want to do that and you don't understand what you're getting yourself into when you're trying to fit in with people. You're not designed to fit in. We as a as a group, as a as a people, as a race or whatever, our culture, we're not designed to be like the white folk. We're not designed to be like the Asians. We're not designed to be like none of these outside nations because we're not them. We're a peculiar people. And I'm trying to get to uh, <laughs> trying to get to where it was in here because I was just reading it. I think it was actually in Exodus Um, because I got to read Exodus again because I need to reread Exodus actually to help with something that I have to put together for people that are in their Exodus season where God is moving you. He's removing you from a place of bondage. He's removing you from slavery, not a uh, physical slavery, but slavery in the now sense could be a place of bondage somewhere where you're stuck at. Um, so I'm just going to put the scripture up on the thing, but God chose us. As a peculiar people, for we were the fewer people, but he chose us. And one thing we have an issue with is wanting to fit in with the people in the lands where we live, even amongst each other. Like, it's so monkey see, monkey do. If one person doing it, everybody want to do it. Like, even with the whole nose ring thing now, I just see it now. Like, of course, I have a nose ring, but don't ever get it messed up because I didn't had a nose ring since I was in high school. Um, Even doing... Just doing dumb stuff in school. But I love my nose ring. Um, and I'm not going to take it out until I feel like it. But I know it's now like the two nose ring thing. Like, it's a trend now. Like, I just, when I see, I just be seeing like scrolling or something. Especially on like TikTok. If I get on TikTok, which I don't be on TikTok often. But if I do get on, I notice I scroll. It's every, you know, every girl is like looking the same. Like, even you got older women. They got two nose rings that's getting the same things that the young girls. It's like monkey see, monkey do. When one person do it, another person hop on it. You don't even know what it means. You don't know the meaning behind it. You don't know what it really is. But you see other women doing it, and it looks cool to, to you. So you just hop on bandwagon and do what they do. Um, and that's what we have to stop doing because when you want to be like other people, you don't know what you're signing yourself up for. You don't know what type of doors you're opening to sign deals with the devil. You don't know how you're inviting the enemy into your life by simply doing certain things, simply bringing certain things into your house or, or putting certain holes on your body or just anything. You don't know what you're doing if you don't know the meaning behind said thing. We have to be careful about doing what other people doing. Other people talk about saging and crystals. You have to do your own due diligence, especially in this spiritual, religious world. You can't do in what everybody else is doing because a lot of them are doing nothing that's of God. They're not doing it the way that God said it. They listening to pastors. It's just regurgitated information. The more I'm reading and the more I hear like Christians talk, and everybody quotes the same. It's like, out of this big Bible, you mean to tell me all y'all do is say the same? Y'all only say the same things? Out of all the Psalms, there's like a hundred something Psalms. And all I hear these people say all the time is Psalm 91. Out of all of this in here, that's the only, that's the only protection that you know of. The only Psalm that talks about protection or of battling against your enemies. That's the only scripture you know about that. That's why I say Christianity be given caught by. It gives caught and your, your, your pastors be the caught leaders. 
They tell y'all, they indoctrinate y'all, tell you what you what they want you to know. You never go do the due diligence for yourself. Go read for yourself. Go read the whole chapter for yourself because they don't even be reading the whole chapter. They take a scripture out and then they want to make a whole sermon about it. And then they teach it to you and then you go home regurgitating that same BS and never doing your own due diligence. And this is our problem as a people. We just want to fit in and do what's cool, do what everybody else is doing. Not even knowing what's the root behind it. It's just literally monkey see, monkey do, wanting to fit in. And that's not even you. That's not even what you do. And I see that so much within our community. And then people wonder why you go hang out with that girl and she treats you like this. Because especially, like, you know, for, for the women, and it happens for the men too. Um, but you'll, you know, you'll see an it girl on, on Instagram or on TikTok or whatever. You'll see this and now you want to go hang out with this person because they seem pop and they seem cool. Now you want to hang out with them when you don't know really what they do behind the scenes. Just like all this stuff with Diddy, all this stuff coming out with him now. But at first people were seeing Carisha with them, with him and seeing what she got going on. Everybody want to be a part of it. They wish they could sit with Diddy. Y'all want to be a part of these elites. Y'all consistently idolize these celebrities as if they're not mere humans like you. And a lot of them have, they have chose their side and it ain't the kingdom of heaven. They chose the kingdom of darkness. They choosing to worship Baal. They choosing to worship Satan. They choosing to go against the grain of God, against the creation. They, they're Satanists, Satanists. However you say it, they're rebellion, they're rebelling against God, against the, the order that God has created. They're manipulating God's creation, manipulating everything that God set up for us to do in the righteous way, because God is a righteous God. And there's, there's holiness to everything he does. He knows what he's doing. No matter what you agree or disagree with, there's a reason. It's structure. It's to create order for the humans that he placed here on this earth. Nothing that he's doing is to prevent you from having freedom. But there's guidelines, there's rules and regulations that you must follow as a people. And a lot of times those Satanists, Satanists, they don't want to follow this. They want to rebel against this. And then, of course, when you rebel, just like they did up in the heavens before Satan was kicked down here, you want to um, you want to um, rally up some people to come along with you because you never want to fall by yourself. People don't want to take the fall by themselves. When they fall, they want to bring you down with them, too. So they tell you, come on, come on, come do this, even though you know that that's not right. You're being convicted of it because you really have righteousness in you. You're not really with that stuff yet. You going along just so, so you can fit in with people because you want to be liked by these people who might seem cool, popular, pop, and you want to fit in with them. Not knowing that when they go down, baby, you going down too because you want to fit in with them. You have you can't be just monkey see, monkey do. And just because stuff look good, stuff that look good ain't no good. Stuff that feel good ain't really no good for you because feel good moments leads to your demise at the end. Like I said in a video recently, um, I don't know which one it was, but these things will lead to your demise. You serving these, Id these idols, these gods, people that can't save you. In your day of doom, they're not going to be there for you. When you getting evicted, foreclosed on, when you going through relationship troubles, when you battling illnesses and nothing, you you get on your knees and you get to praying to the Lord. You're not going to pray and ask them Beyonce's and Diddy's and Carisha's and Ari's and Jada's and any of your other social media influencers. You're not going to, to them. They're not the ones that's coming to save you. They, they ain't going to do nothing for you. They're not even pissing on you if you on fire. They're not doing nothing for you yet. You idolize these people. You want to be like these people. Y'all really sit up here calling this Beyonce internet. A girl who don't even interact with you guys on the internet at all. A girl who clearly her eyes just show that she's, that she's lost the lifelessness in her. But yet, y'all y'all be idolizing these people. Y'all go to these concerts and stuff with these as rituals where they're able to mess with your eye gates and get you to open up the door. Open up the door. Your doors. For the enemy to come in and use you all because of what you're consuming through your eye gate, through your ear gate. Idolizing these rappers who promote destruction, whether it's toxicity within relationships, whether it's pr promoting unaliving yourself because of the depression. Like that raw wave. Like promoting destruction, unaliving each other in the communities. And that's also what we're going to talk about when we get to reading um, 
into Ezekiel and just everything that's in the book is literally talking about it's clear, clear as day that we are the people of the book. All the violence that's going on in the cities, everything that's going on in the cities and in our towns that where it's majority us, while we go through this stuff and while we're getting in trouble for these said things, we wonder why it's so hard for us is because we keep idolizing people. I saw a video not long ago about some girl seeing Tommy. If y'all know Tommy from Love and Hip Hop. I guess she saw her at the store. She was like, you're my idol. Like, people really be sitting up here saying this mess. I want to know, what is it that I make you idolize these people? What is it so, like, I just don't get it because, I mean, it's never given their nothing to me. Like, they're regular humans. They just got more money than me and they got fame. I don't want the fame. And I'm not going to do anything for money. And that's the, that's the difference between a righteous soul and... A demonic one. That's how you know if you're a true child of God, if you have integrity, you're not going to do anything for the love of money. You're not going to just do anything. A lot of people will do anything for money. That goes to show your character. You don't care who you backdoor. You don't care how you lose your own dignity. You don't care about, your, about what you have to do to get attention, to get fame, to get recognition, to get money to get likeness, to get some type of power. You don't care what you do to get that. You're an abomination to the Lord. And anybody that does that is an abomination to the Lord and they surely will have their day. And if you are following behind that, you're engaging and becoming part of these cults that promotes destruction, you too will fall. You can't serve two masters. I be seeing people, and that's why, even when people say God, everybody that say God, they don't worship God. Everybody that say Jesus, they don't worship Jesus. Everybody who say these names, they use them as terms of endearment. It's just like a, it's like just like saying I love you, or just like saying good morning. It's just regular words to them. They don't really see the weight that the words hold or what they're saying. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. So you got to be careful what you're saying. You got to be careful what you allow other people to say to you. And then you take on that energy. You take on the frequency of those words that they're saying to you. Let it pierce your ears, come up to your brain, affect your spirit. And now you're now falling into the same things that they're doing because of all of the BS that you're listening to them say, the BS that you're watching, the stuff that you're consuming. You got to be careful what you're consuming. You got to be careful what you allow to pierce you in your vagina or as a man who you are putting your your stuff in you got to be careful of that anything can become an idol and that's something that i wanted to talk about since we're talking about that idols anything that you feel like you can't live without anything that you put before god your phone is an idol a lot of people idolize the phone you cannot live without your phone if you if your phone you will go crazy over your phone before you go crazy over the word of god before you would even talk to god you get up, grab the phone before you get up and just even just say, thank you, God, for waking me up this morning. Before you go to bed at night, you, you quick to grab a rose toy before you quit to say a prayer. And that's what I wanted to talk about. That's a that's an idol. These these toys, these sexual toys. Those are idols. And it's just crazy to me how normal like how normalized so much of this stuff is. Like, it's like toxicity is normalized. Using these molten images, the, the Exodus says, let's go read it. Let's go read it. <laughs> like, it says, the Ten Commandments. It says, and God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God who have brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. Commandment number one, baby. Commandment number one, you should have no other gods before me. Number two, you shall not take any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You should not bow down yourself to them nor serve them. For I am the Lord your God and I, I am a jealous God. God is a jealous God. Anything you put before him there, yeah, he, he don't like that. That makes him mad. It makes him jealous. It's like, how dare you put that before me? For one, I'm the one, I'm the creator of all things. Anything you have, the source of it is God. The material that your phone is made out of, 
man did, mankind didn't make no minerals, they didn't make iron, they didn't make trees, they didn't make um electricity, they didn't make none of this stuff. All your gadgets, your rose toy, your your ill those those shrines, which is those, those are literally like the, the modern day male shrines, which is the, the male osties. Y'all know the, the word, the P word for streetwalker. I don't want to really say it in the video because I don't want it to like get flagged or nothing. But, um, well, not even get flagged, but just get um, add suitability. But those things, because I'm like, what is it? When I'm reading this stuff and I'm like, what do they be doing with like, but it's like even with blow up dolls, you idol, these are idols. Mere creations that's used to sin, used for things that go against the, the will of God. You should not be using any carved image, like it says any graven image, any molten image. You should not be using any of these things to seek pleasure. God created what's need for pleasure, what's needed for pleasure. And even still with that, it's not even necessarily like about pleasure, but because humans and the, the, the flesh that we have, and when we're not disciplined and we go off the flesh and we care about instant gratification and we care about what feels good, we don't care what we do. We don't care if it's outside of the order and the will of God. We don't care about that because we care about pleasing our flesh, not pleasing God. We'll make our own selves idols. We'll make things that we have idols. But like I said, you should not bow down yourself to them, nor serve them. For I am the Lord your God, and I'm a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy to thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. You should not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless to take his name in vain. Um... We ain't gonna go over the whole Ten Commandments, but those the first three. The first three is talking about not serving no other gods. Um, it was another scripture that I have wrote down here. Um Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 26. And Deuteronomy, the Deuteronomy is 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 yeah, because it's a lot of conviction in that for us, because we are the chosen people. That's Deuteronomy 28, Deuteronomy 7. It all talks about us being the chosen people, what we're not to do. And that's the main thing that we continuously do. But it says, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 26, you shall not bring an abomination into your house and like it come under the ban. You shall utterly detest it. You shall utterly abhor it, for it is something bad. You're not to bring things that are abominations to the Lord in your house. You're not to bring these graven molten images and, you know, bringing in those objects to please yourself or to please your partner. Like, it's just, it just has gotten so, it just has gotten so far. We're so perverted that it's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Where is that scripture that, um, it was a scripture in here that, was about that. Um, oh yeah, let's read this one. I mean, this isn't what I was about to say, but this is no, but I say the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. And I don't want you to become sharers in demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. Or do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? We are not strangers than he, are we? That's 1 Corinthians chapter 10, um, verse 20 to 22. Basically, you can't serve two masters. You cannot do things because everybody else is doing it and because it looks cool. When you don't know the root behind what they're doing. You don't even understand that they're literally serving another God than you. They do things different than you. And even if they say they are children of God, I realize that within this walk, 
Because I'd be like, why they get to still do this? Like, but me, I get heavy conviction off that. Even with the whole Christmas thing, I get heavy conviction about that. Like, even if I wanted to bring a Christmas tree in here, because part of me is I'm still grieving the the loss of a tradition. You know, I'm grieving that still. It's still something that, you know, I'm I'm really coming to terms with because I'm obedient. And I know that, and that's going to be a whole nother video. Um, and it's still more, more in depth detail that I want to research about this whole, all these pagan holidays for real. Um, it's, it's a lot of research that I still have to do, but if you want to know where it really talked about that tree, that Christmas tree, Jeremiah chapter 10 is talking all about it. That is pagan. That's pagan things to do. Cutting down the tree out the forest, decking it with silver and gold ornaments that's 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 christmas that's what you do for christmas and those are abominations to the lord so it's like when i see other people that still celebrate these things and stuff like that it make me be like how they can do it but i realize that i'm an israelite i'm not christian i'm not none of that if anything i am an israelite i'm a descendant of jacob of abraham I'm a true one, so I can't do what everybody else do. I can't do what Christians do. I can't do what they do. Because a lot of Christians that are supposed to be Christ followers, they don't follow Christ at all. They don't stand on business like Christ at all. So this is why we have to understand that even if they look like you, even if they go to church with you, even if they talk about God like you, even if they sow whatever, everything, that don't mean that you can sit with them. It don't mean that you have to know what's what you can't be afraid to stand apart. Everybody ain't for everybody. Even if everybody is children of God, all children of God can't still sit with one another. We can help one another, but you can't be trying to get buddy, buddy with everybody because they say that they are a sister or brother of Christ and all of that. Because when you don't speak up for certain causes, when you just sit there and watch craziness go on and you're supposed to be a christian and you don't openly rebuke it what's the scripture i wrote down open rebuke is better than secret love that's proverbs chapter 27 verse 5 open rebuke is better than secret love open rebuke is better than secret love so just because you you rebuke somebody openly and tell them hey boo that's not what it is and that's wrong it's not judging you it's correcting you it's a righteous judgment. So it is judgment. It's a righteous judgment. And that's what we're supposed to do. Another thing in Proverbs, open your mouth, open your mouth and judge righteously. Open your mouth and judge righteously. So when you seeing things and sitting back, not saying nothing because you're afraid of being uh, condemned yourself or you're afraid of being, you know, whatever they do. They want to boo, throw tomatoes, throw tomatoes at you. So what? So what? Take it and make tomato juice, baby. They're going to be coming to you for that tomato juice to make them some good old spaghetti. That's what they're going to be doing. When they day of doom coming, when this famine that's coming to the land, all them tomatoes they was throwing at you, they're going to be coming right back to you, just like Joseph Brothers did him. Y'all casted them out, and yet y'all the same ones, <laughs> same ones that had to come back asking for food. Same ones had to come back. The same ones that give you they tell the kids, they be the same ones that need to come back and ask you for paper, for toilet paper, to wipe their own behind. Because of all the crap that's running up out of them for all the foolishness that they didn't put into them. Opening these doors to these demons. And want to just because you're afraid of speaking up or you're afraid of not fitting in, you don't want to say nothing. But overall, I did this video for us to talk about. It was that's why I was supposed to be going to that little scripture that I wanted to see. Um, if I could find it. But it's so many scriptures in here about idolatry. It's so many. That's the consistent thing. As I just read every book, every book, every book of the Bible, every single book. Every book, both Old and New Testament, all of these books. Every last one, you will see something about idolatry in them. Something about idolatry, condemning idolatry. Anything to be an idol. Like I said, anything that you feel like you can't live without food is our biggest idol. 
And I know that's something, that's why I, I know that fasting is necessary, especially for somebody like me. Because the, the spirit of gluttony, you just want to eat, eat, eat. You love food, love food, love food. A lot of stuff that we use. Things that you're smoking on, lusting. If you will risk it all, risk everything you have for a piece of coochie or for some for a good time, for some 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 to appease your sexual appetite, that's idolatry. You don't care about going against God's order. You don't care about who you will backdoor, who you will snake. You don't care about who else is going to be affected by your decisions. All because you want instant gratification. All because you want a little bit of pleasure. You don't care what's going to come after that. That was like something. That was the scripture I was trying to get to, but I don't remember where. I thought I had had put it in my little notes here. Even as I notice around my neighborhood, like it's just now that I'm awakened to this, I see it everywhere. It's like these statues, your monument, the monument, these, these, um, these tall structures, that's idol, it's idolatry. Down here at the station, it's a bull just there. It's a, a molten image, a carved image. These sculpted images, sculpted pictures of something that can't really move like and that's why I was well, did I um where was that one at dang I, I seen all of these yeah it says the idols of the nations are silver and gold made by human hands they have mouths but cannot speak eyes but cannot see they have ears but cannot hear nor is there breath in their mouths those who make them will be like them, and so will all who trust in them. Those are these, these man-made sculpted items. Even right here, across the, the way from me, in their window, like in the backyard right here, it's an owl. I'm going to probably try to see if I can put a picture in here for y'all. And I'm just feeling like, I'm like, and I don't know if it was right here before I moved, but an owl was supposed to be able to have, owls have great vision. They can see. So it's supposed to be like protection for your house. But to see that they have this stuff like up there, I just don't like all that stuff. Like, because for one, it looks like the owl is looking at my house. So I'm like, so I'll be praying against that owl. Like, don't be in my business. Um, And him and his wife right here, they be given definitely strange. Um, Definitely strange, especially the man. He is strange. Um, and they're, yeah, but he be given strange. And then they got this, this gold. I don't know. It's like one, some type of, um, some type of little statue thing. I don't know who, cause I don't know about, I don't know what every, I don't know what these people look like. These gods look like and all of that stuff, because I don't do that. I don't care about faces. Don't nobody face go up in my house. I don't, none of that stuff go up in my house. None of that stuff. I don't do all of that. I don't know what it is. I will never, I'm not even interested in learning because no face, I don't like no face. I don't need a face of nobody. I don't need a face of Jesus. I don't need all that. All I need is the power of my tongue, fasting, prayer, my word. That's it. That's it. Me speaking to God, me reading my word, me fasting. Those are the only things that I need to do. I don't need no crystals. I don't need no sage. I don't need to do no weird type spiritual baths and all of that. My spiritual bath is regular taking a shower, might take a soak in a jacuzzi every so often, um, which really only when I'm sick or something like that because I need to put the effing salt in here. But I ain't doing no salt rituals. I'm not doing none of that weird stuff. None of that witchcraft. None of that. I'm not doing none of that. But they got the little, he got the little thing in his window right there. And it just be like, are y'all fine? Like, I don't like that. Um, But it's like in the window. And it's like, and even when I'm walking up the street, it's like they got um a thing that's sitting like this, the statues. I don't like that stuff. It's just like, it, now that I'm awakened, it rubbed me the wrong way. And that's what I'm saying, even flags. And that's another thing. I mean, it's just so much. I, that's why I be feeling like I'm overwhelmed with 
having so it's so much to research and so much because just last night I was flipping through um my this this um the almanac and it's it's some good information here. And this is something I got from the yard sale. And we're gonna talk about this and another thing too, but I was looking at some of the flags. Um yeah, it's like all the flags and just the stuff hold meaning. Symbolisms have meaning. Colors have meaning. Before that they were before they were writing words and stuff, they did pictographs. Pictures have meaning. Symbols have meaning. And it ain't always something that's good. And when we're ignorant to this stuff, we don't know. We just be doing stuff, drawing stuff, uh, getting certain things tattooed on our bodies. We don't even know. You're putting, you're stamping demonic things to your body out of ignorance. We don't even know. We don't even know. And as I just be walking around, I be like, everything just give me the heebie-jeebies. I just be like, ugh. I just be rebuking all the time, like, you know. Um, but we have a lot of idol worship going on in our community. Even with pouring, like, liquor to your dead homies. Yeah. That's, that's what they used to, that's part of this idolatry. Serving other gods, you know, it's a it's a lot, you know. Even with the way we celebrate these, um, a lot of these holidays, even your own birthday, making your own, you you acting like you're a god, like everybody has to bow down to you for your birthday. You tell, saying you celebrate your birthday for the whole month, girl, boy, f you. Nobody care about your your. Nobody cares about your birthday all month long but you. No one cares. You're not a god. Sorry. You have certain powers, but truly, if we had all the power that we think we had, we wouldn't really need to go run to the most high when stuff's going crazy in our life. If we really had all that power, we wouldn't be coping with drugs, food, sex, and all this other stuff because you're a god, right? So you have the power to deliver yourself from your situation. Do it. Do it. You have the power to do it, do it. Without stepping on somebody else's back, do it. God has given us certain powers and we need to exercise them the, the right ways. Um, but all of that, any of that stuff can be idolatry. Food, drinks, you put a liquor before anything. You put food before anything. You put your phone before anything. You uh, you put these celebrities. You wake up. You eat, breathe, and sleep celebrities. You know more about celebrities than you do about your own body. You can tell what's going on with a celebrity, but you can't even tell what's something off with your own body. You can't even tell when you got an illness on you. You can't even tell when your pH balance is off. You can't even tell. <sighs> but you know everything that's going on with these celebrities. You're so invested in today's life. You're so busy trying to be like them, manipulating God's creation. Anything that's a manipulation to the creation, that's actually doing the devil's work, baby. But you'll do that when you're trying to be like other people. And that's how you're trying to figure out, what is it about these celebrities? Like, why do y'all be going so crazy over them? Like, they are regular people. It's okay to like their music, like their songs. But even listen to the words of their song. Listen to how that resonate with your spirit and why it resonates with your spirit. Why do you, why does that resonate with you? Ask yourself that stuff. Why does this, why does this resonate with me? What is it about this that I like? Am I perverted like these people are? Am I feeling lifeless like these people are? Do I have these voids like these people do? Do I feel unworthy like these people do? Do I have this spirit? These, you do you have any of these demonic spirits on you? Because you must do to relate to these people in that way. These lustful spirits, when you are so caught up into the sexy red songs and and Cardi B songs and all these explicit songs about, you know, taking a taking somebody, man, or 
you know, taking a, a girl or even unaliving a nigga. Like, why do you resonate with that? Why do you have the spirit, those spirits on you? Those are things that you want to be praying for God to deliver you from. Because when you awaken and when you get delivered from certain stuff, it just be like, that's wild. Like, dang, that's really wild. Why are we praising a person who's always talking about unaliving themselves? Why do we resonate with that energy? And this is why I always tell you, I pay attention to how you feel after you watch certain things. Like, after you, you know, like, it's just with some of this music, and that's the, the number one way, that's the number one impact that people have because sometimes people, even when they're alone, people don't know how to really be alone with their thoughts and really process them and deal with them. So you turn on music. I, I mean, I know folk like that. All you do is listen to music all day. And it be like either sad music or, or you know, pain, like pain. Some people just love pain. And then because they love pain, they feel like they it gives them more. It makes, I don't know what it is, but it's a, it's a that's a disease. It, people, some people really love to soak in misery. They love that. They love that. They really be comparing pain. Oh, you don't know about pain. Oh, I got more pain than you. Like comparing pain. That's strange. So you can get more pity. Like a lot of people have this, a lot of self-pity. And that's why they go around telling you they sob stories all the time. Like, okay. Okay. Yeah, that was sad that that happened to you. It definitely should not have happened. But what you going to do with that? What you going to do with that? We got to take our pain, turn it into purpose. Stop sitting around looking for pity parties. And because you feel like that, now you want other people to feel like that with you. That's what I was saying about like the whole raw wave thing. Like a lot of people that love raw wave music is because they resonate with it on some type of level. He said... He's depressed. So you just eat and want to unalive. You feel like you you just, uh, what, what's the little saying that they be saying? Like, you want to jump in the ocean and can't swim and all of this stuff. You got to you gotta denounce that spirit. That's something that anytime you just feel like you don't want to live, why? Because life is hard because of things that you've been through. Like, and then you sit around and listen to other people that feel like you. And then just the, the rituals that they be having. And then people don't even understand what's going on. It's like, it's just, it's, it's, it's sad to see the impact. And this is why they, they have celebrities in these positions. Because they know a lot of us, especially idolize celebrities and look up to them and want to be like them, want to live like them. People really be going broke to try to live like a celebrity. You're like on a total different financial status than them. That's it, literally. Only different financial statuses. Spiritually, one in the same. Spiritually, one in the same, which is why you resonate with them. But if they're on a different financial level than you, why are you trying to keep up with them? Why are you trying to buy things that they had when their circumstances are different than yours? You're supposed to be trying to work your way to a point where you are not struggling after you do said thing to keep up with them, to look like keeping up with the Joneses. And this goes back to what I said earlier in the video. Like we do stuff to try to fit in with people when we ain't there yet. But yeah, like I was saying, you don't want to do everything that they do. And like we read already in the scripture. These Gentiles sacrifice to these things. They sacrifice in the demons and not God. You think, and just because they say the name of God, even when they get up there and make their speeches, say, oh, I want to thank God. You don't really know who they're talking about. You don't really know who they're referring to. Because my God blesses people, and so does the, the enemy. Anybody that's promoting destruction, he's going to bless you for that. That God going to bless you for promoting destruction going to bless you for rebelling against the, the, the correct way, going against morals and principles. 
He gonna bless you for that. And God gonna bless you when you stay righteous, when you stay having integrity, when you stay within his guidelines and don't sell your soul for attention, fame, money. You know, let, let the love of money drive you to doing corrupt things all for the name of money and fame. Which only end up warping your spirit. Because some of the things that these people have to do, like, look here, look at what y'all are hearing. Look at what y'all are hearing about Diddy and, and Cassie and some of the stuff that they had to do. And even with Young Miami, like, some of the stuff that you do, you getting peed on for Chanel bags, for trips. And this is why I tell, you know, I've, I've told, you know, a, a couple people, when you are watching other people online, you don't know what they're doing to get what they have. You don't know what they're sacrificing. You don't know how they're getting treated. You do not idolize nobody's relationship because you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. People do stuff for image. Image. Behind the scenes, they getting spit on, beat on. They pay. These women be out here buying love and buying men, but yet they get online and act like they man bought them this whole time. They bought it. But then they, they pre present something to you to try to convince you that what you have at home ain't good enough because it ain't what they do the whole time. They don't have lying to you, but you trying to be like this girl. You want a body like this girl who then went in and risked her life several times laying on the table. You don't know what type of uh, leaks she having out her butt. You don't know what type of uh, blood clock she may have had from her surgeries. But yet you want to you wanna do the stuff that these people doing. Because it looks good it gets them attention attention is a drug that's let's just say harmful you don't want all type you don't want any and every type of attention all attention ain't good attention all money ain't good money everything that seemed like a good time look how many people people would tell you all the time People that are unalive now, that I know personally, situations I've been through personally, it really wasn't worth it. Like everything that came with it, it wasn't worth it. It ain't worth it. The harm that can come to you, the harm that can come to your children, all because you're looking for instant gratification, it ain't worth it. Trying to be in rooms with certain people just so you can take a picture, like, just so you can get a picture and look like you got status because you, you're in a room with, with certain other people. Like, there's people out here that really do that. They just want to be in rooms, want to be in rooms. Simply being in a room ain't necessarily going to put you on. You might get exposure, but your work and your ethics within itself, you have to do the work to make sure you stay on. You have to do your own work. And just because you get in a room with some certain people, if you don't have no character, at least the character that they're looking for, because it might not be good character, but if you don't have it, they don't care. They don't care about what your name is and who you are, if it ain't really benefiting them. They don't care. People will do anything for attention. Anything. And y'all be idolizing these people as if they are not regular. You don't know what people be doing behind the scenes. Even your pastors, stop idolizing them. They are not idols. Nobody should be an idol but God. Your parents, not even idols. Not even idols. You can love them, respect them. You know, you give kindness to everybody. But you don't hold people on some pedestal and say, oh, you're my, you're my role model. You're my idol. Like, no. Because a lot of times if you knew the truth about people, you wouldn't be like, mm. Just like that stuff coming out now. Now people have stuff to say about Diddy, but at one point, y'all acting bad, acting bad, acting bad. Y'all want y'all ready to act bad. They promoting destruction once again to our community. Act bad. Act bad, act bad, act bad. And then you go find yourself acting bad. Then you wonder why you 
pop up with an STD. You wonder why you pop up with an unwanted pregnancy. You wonder why you pop up with not not subside your head somewhere because you was out acting bad. You wonder why that traumatic situation happened. It's because somebody was out here acting bad, letting the enemy use them to act bad. Because the thief is only here. The enemy only objective is to steal, kill, and destroy. If he's not doing like we said in the Antichrist video, like he said, if it's not all three or one of the three, then that's not his mission. His mission is only here to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's the agenda of these satanists, these sexy reds. They want to promote you to like all of that mess like i can really go in about a lot of that stuff and it's just even seeing i think i saw a picture and she was with kim kardashian and she had the horns on her head like the devil horns and it's like it's just it's so clear as day like it's so clear as day like i said as i walk around you know it just be clear as day when your spiritual eyes open, this stuff be right in your face. The, the idolatry, the wickedness, it be like so loud. It's so loud where at first I was ignorant to it. And a lot of us are ignorant to it because we don't know. Because we spend more time in our phones worried about what other people are doing. In our phones looking for entertainment versus in our phones looking for education. Um... Obviously, you guys that are watching this video, y'all like some education um, because y'all know that's what I'm here to do. I ain't here to promote. I'm not here to entertain. I'm here to teach the real. I'm here to tell the truth and shame the devil. I'm here to slay demons, not battle them. I'm here to teach y'all how to slay them, not battle them. I'm teaching you how to seek the love of God, not the love of the world, because seeking the love of the world will get you into places that you will be crying out to God to come and free you from. You'll be screaming out for mercy. And that ain't that, that ain't what you want to do. You don't want to serve these, these things, whether it's sculpted items or human idols. You don't want these carved idols or human idols. You don't want them. Things you just feel like, oh, I can't live without that. I need that. This is why it's important to fast and go without things for a period of time. Like to prove to yourself and prove to God that, hey, this ain't something. The only thing I need is you and the breath that you give me every day. The love that you give me, the protection that you give me every day. I need that more than I need these things. Yes, of course, we need things to live. But it's like, what you want to do? What you willing to do for it? What you willing to sacrifice to other gods for? Who you willing to betray to get those things? And that's what tell a lot about people's character. Because these people really out here getting peed on for a check. You really let somebody disrespect you in the name of acceptance. A lot of women be doing stuff that you try, you look at, you, you, a lot of women idolize the man. You respect your man, but you don't idolize no one. You respect your woman, but you don't idolize no one. These men really be, a lot of our men aren't into certain things, but because of a woman, because you want her likeness or you want her body, you willing to put up with stuff that you normally wouldn't you sacrificing things that go against principality of course you're going to compromise in certain areas but when this comes to your foundation your beliefs your morals your principles your values and you compromising that for a pretty woman or because she's a woman that is good with her and do some tricks and things with her body that's where it, it, that's where idolatry kicks in when you sacrificing, you going against your convictions for these people, places, or things. You being convicted to do something, that is a conviction from the Lord. If you're being convicted to give up something, being convicted to do something, 
God is urging you to do that. And when you don't do that, you're sinning, you're transgressing. You're going against what you know is the right thing to do. Do what's right, even when nobody looking. And stop trying so hard to fit in with people. You don't want to fit in every space. You don't want to fit in everywhere. Because fitting in some of these places will lead you to a world of trouble and misery. And only you will have to deal with it. They not coming home with you, going to sleep with you at night. They not in your head when you're by yourself. They not with you. So it might be cool. You can go out, have drinks, be with your friends and all of that. But when you get by yourself, those those demons that you decide deals with, and they're going to torment you. You know? So I'm going to leave this video here, you guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Um, stop the idolatry. Okay? So, this is...